DCC and guests, I guess. Um, barbecue. So top left is Bartimas, which is outside the valley. That's in Agadio. Um, and again, that's what 10, 10 euros for pretty much you come out there and you can barely walk. Um, and then, yeah, the locals tend to rock up in either battered, really battered cars or on their horses because they've got a habit of crashing their cars. Um, although they can't have that far to drive, surely. So where we stay, that's the campsite behind Andy there. This is Easter, which generally there's less people at Easter, but more caving happens. Um, below is summer, so the weather's pretty much the same. And then this is the bakers, or the apartments of the bakers. Each, I don't know if it's below you on your screen, it's quite below you on mine. Um, these individual doors are individual apartments, which are up to four to six people, I think it is, um, in each. I've only stayed in there once because, well, I'm tight ass. Um, I want to pay three pound camping instead. Um, just get Sorry. Just to get booked quite yeah. early. Um, <clears throat> along the lines of um, Les's creepy crawlies in his the other week, I've added some pictures uh, of things that I don't really know anything about. But Can you name them all, Tom? What's that? Can you name them all? Uh, yeah, that's a little square prickly thing. Uh, that was a six-legged thing. That was a crayfish, bottom right. Yeah. And salamander yes. and a donkey. Goat. Goat. <laughs> Goat. Oh, that was the unicorn. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what that's. I don't know what type of snake that is, but I found that at the bottom of the. I think it was about sixty meter shaft, and mm. yeah. I didn't stick around. Well, I poked it with a stick, but I didn't stick around after that. So. Why would you poke it with a stick, for God's sake? <laughs> well, just to see if it was alive. Tom, <laughs> was that um, was that crayfish in Agua Cave by any chance? No, uh, it's in Havero Two, I think. You know the fruit. Uh, right. Um, but they do have they're in. Agua as well, I think, aren't they? So. The two types, aren't they? They've got the, yeah. the ones that are sort of um, taking over. I think the Vero ones are the natural species, if that's the right terminology. Mm. The native species, sorry. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, and then salamander, <coughs> middle left. Um, yeah, so that's general overview of the valley. I didn't actually put any pictures of the, the actual... You know, mountains and um, local landscapes, which I should have, but um, not far out of the valley, I think it's about 40 minutes or so, there's a zinc mine for those interested in missing the mines of North Wales if when you're there. Um, this is Doug and possibly Sweetie behind him in there from 2014, I think. Uh, some stats from the Matienza website. So at the moment, or oh, as of November 2020, I think it was, there's 5,055 um, documented sites. That doesn't mean 5,055 caves found. Um, it means there's sites which could be a dig, it could be a hole, it, it could be anything, anything of interest to the expedition really um, but if you look through there's 398,522 um, metres worth of passage length um, that's for bits that have actually been surveyed because sometimes if it's so poor you don't bother surveying it you should but we don't. Um, and then shafts over 99 Meters deep, 56 of sites at 99 meters long, 255 of digs. Well, read for it yourself. Um, but then, and then there's some top stats of 
the kind of bigger caves, which I've tried to gather up as a, well, gather up a bit of a collection. And Charlotte's looking closely at the screen now, so I'm not sure <laughs> what she's going to pick out. Um, but in terms of discoveries, uh, if you look at the cave numbers, so for example, 0107, Quaver Hewitt, um, that the earlier numbers is obviously it was found a lot earlier, so that would have been one of the first caves that they actually found there, and now that has been recorded to 67 kilometers. Um, Vaini 733, so same goes, and then you get Torkel Lavaca, which is the fourth longest in the area at 2889, and that. This the expedition's been going for 60 years. Um, 60 years last year, I think it was. So 19, early 1960s. Um, and yeah, Torco Avaca was only found in 2008. So it's kind of showing that there's still a lot to find. So 23 kilometers worth there has been found, and then the rest of the systems are still pushing on. So when I was last there in 2019, I think, was it 2019? Yep. Um, I was working in Quaver Fresnado 2, which is an absolute shithole. It's essentially OHA, but Spanish. Tom comes out uniformly ginger <laughs> from that cave. Yeah. Um, mud. Yeah. So that, so Fresnado 2 is essentially a six, six hour trip or so to the end. Um, and we're bolting up Avens at the moment, which is, like I say, it's grim. It's just covered in mud and, yeah. And there's a mud sump in the middle to go through, which I don't think I put the video on, but I thought mm. about it. Um, but then you've got top top 10 depths. Um, and, well, yeah, they're just some stats which don't really mean much, but the raw meters so is big enough. Anyway, um, I don't know how clearly you can see that. I can't really see it on mine, but I can try and zoom in. I don't know if it will work on yours. I'll do that. Um, and, yeah. yeah. Can you see that, yeah? Yeah, yeah, see pretty good. So, Matienzo down here. So, the dark green that is slightly shaped like the UK. Um, that's awesome. And then, so Pablo's is roughly... That's the Baker's. So Pablo's is roughly there, I think. Um, yeah, so the only way is out. There's two roads out. One's down here at Crucifano, and then the other is up this big windy road. But that's also the way in. So as soon as you come off the ferry, whatever way you come in, you usually come in at Fuente West Varus at top here. It turns out, because our Matienzo music always starts, when we get to Fuente West Varus, we turn on ELO's Mr. Blue Sky, and however long that um, thank you, however long that track is, it takes the exact amount of time to drive to the bottom of the hill. A few sharp, um, <laughs> sharp corners. Um, so on here, this is like overlay of the caves in the area. You've got Risco and Sado down there. Here is Cotaron, I think it is, and Rignada, which will, no, I think that's Rignada. Um, no, that is Ranyada, and that's Mustaco, um, which I'll show you pictures of in a bit. Torco Lavaca, which we've mentioned before, that's this bit here up in Hornado. Um, and there's a bar there conveniently. Uh, do, 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 do. What else we've got? There should be some big systems. You've got the Riagno system, which makes part of the Four Valleys. Um, Four Valleys system is 69 kilometers in total, so it's essentially. Well, it's like three county system in um, in the Dales, really. That covers Riagno, uh, Secuador, I think, 
Matienzo and Rueva. So they're the four valleys. We're trying to connect it to Fresnado. Sorry, so often now. Um, where Torno comes in. So Torno at the moment is... Let's see if I can find it. Um, there's, the, it, there's something called the Long Road of Torno, which is a long, high passage, high and wide passage, um, which gets too tight in parts. And it's so high that it's one of those where you can climb at any height and you still kind of... You go out of reach, so you need to bolt it. But because you're so high, you feel like you need to bolt where you've just come from, be, you know, just to be safe sort of thing. And I think they're only 50 metres or so from the connection to the Anya. So that, you know, there's a lot of promise there to make that into a really, really big city. Like, that would be over 100 kilometres once that's linked. Wow. Uh, so, oh, we've got an arrow. I don't know what the arrows appeared for. Um, so in terms of the four <coughs> it's made up of Rianyo, um, Carcavezo, uh, Hayuka, which is Jufueka, and one of which I can't remember. Um, oh, can you zoom in on that a little bit, Tom? Yeah, I can try. Uh, zoom. Zoom. It's such a... Hold on. Let me see if I can do it again. Oh, no. you see any detail on that? Better, yeah. I'll, I'll open it up in a minute anyway. But So this is the... I can't remember how long this actually is, but you've got the entrance series here. Um, yeah. And the connections... I can't see it clear well enough, but... Be, I've got some pictures of this place anyway, so you can get general feel. But I think one of these, so you've got this bit here, this big circular thing, and that big circular thing. Um, they're just huge havens, which are about. Uh, about it. Um, yeah, go 100 meters up in places. Um, so essentially a Titan again, but they've been bolted and don't actually go anywhere. So that's a general feel. And all of the caves, all of the caves that are more than 20 meters or so um, will have a full detailed survey like this. So um, we get shouted out if we don't document it properly or write up your recordings. So this is, Rianyo entrance, so the survey you've just seen. Um, that thing, it howls, the draft coming out of there is insane. It's a bit like OHA, actually. Um, you know, when on some days you can get a howling draft out of, out of the lid. Yeah. Well, this is, what, 10, 10 times stronger than that I've ever felt that one. Um, I mean, such a big... Past the big system to bring, yeah, yeah, must, yeah, must, yeah. So, this is like general passage size in Riagno, but um, there are passages that you know the best lights in the world still struggle to see the walls and whatever. And to be fair, that's a general for Matienzo. There are a lot of caves where the passage is just huge, um, and it's Nice dry cave in, in most part, um, but it does kind of reflect. It feel it does feel like caving at home because you go from nice dry passage like this to absolute shit holes, and you know it is grim. So, <laughs> so on the left, this is Hayuka, which is um, well more commonly known as Yufweka. Big railway tunnel size passages again these aren't all my pictures they're stolen that's my picture that this is the astrodome which is 30 meters across and 100 meters high 
Has it been bolted, Tom? Uh, yeah, it's been bolted all the way to the top, um, and it doesn't go anywhere. Um, well, uh, I think the water be. just... What's that, sorry? It must go somewhere. Size of it? Well, the water... Um, this has been formed from the bottom, um, but the water comes in from like the tiniest part. I think it's about 30 yeah, centimetres. So it's a um, phreatic chamber, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you can see the rope just behind Anton there. Mm. That takes yeah. to, I think there's a VB way about there. That's 30 meters up, I think. Oh. Um, <laughs> and yeah, it's just to stand at the bottom there, we were, we were thinking um, all sorts, and the echo is, yeah, it's mental. No, but it is. This was Christmas a couple of years ago, 2016, I think. So I, I think I should have a 3D view of that in a minute. Um, so this is Youth Wacker again, or Yuka. Obviously, like I say, passages kind of go from really big to a little bit squalid. You get a lot of this black, um, shaley type limestone uh, and plenty of stuff that you can pass off to the divers and, you know, general people that you don't like to. Um, on the right here, this was 2019, I think, this exploration, where they were bolting across rifty style, fogs flory, horrible, flaky, sharp, yeah, um, just generally not nice caving, but Cy and I tend to do that and tend to enjoy that sort of thing. I mean, I, I, I mm. like prospect of bolting across into darkness and I can't remember where it went I think they left it and haven't been back yet so but you'll if you've seen the Matienzo book advertised I'm pretty sure that is the front cover or the back cover I can't remember but um but yeah that's Simon Cornhill bolting there so I presume you're using an 18 volt and um, what's that? Bolt. It's not it's not spit. It's not you're not using spits like in the old days, are you? No, no, we've got um, a Milwaukee 12 volt M12 SDS. Okay, um, yeah. I will admit, and well, they've got a Milwaukee 12 volt SDS, but for if you're using expedition gear. You can, we've got Bosch, you know, the 36 volt heavy bastards. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's very little, unless you're right at the end of the system, um, most of the time, yeah, you've got drills and proper gear. So, mm -hmm. and generally, you take your capping gear with you as well, just in case you need, because you don't want to find, you don't want to get across there and find that it craps out and you need to cap it, sort of thing. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so moving on from Riagno, the sorry, Youth Wecker, um, you've got Loeva, which is El Bigo. This picture on the left, you can see somebody right in this. Well, my mouse pointer there yeah. shows the true scale of, um, of the entrance obviously used by farmers for rubbish, but then the actual entrance is a tiny hole just there, I think it is. Yeah, we see it, yeah. Yeah, and again, that's how, you know, draft coming out there is mental. Um, but it goes into a pretty system, as you can see on the right here, with some pretties. Um, and that's, again, part of the full valley system. So big, big development going on under there. Um, but there's a couple of sumps and plenty more to go up there. So Carcavezo, this one's a bit of a shitty one, but still an impressive, you know, a big part of the four valleys. So all the water that comes from Matienzo, or comes through Matienzo, it comes in from wherever the rising is, I can't remember, goes through Agua and then sinks at Carcavezo, which is why it looks so muddy on the right-hand side. So 
at the moment, they're Matty Enzo is suffering quite bad flooding. Um, and it's purely because they the locals haven't kept the sink um cleared. So lots of work has gone into making um the sink, you know, flow freely. They've opened it all up, open passages, um, and engineered the entrances and the sinks and stuff, but then trees and you know, just general rubbish is just ended up in the sink. Bear in mind the sinks, what? four or five metres wide um, and it's just clogging up and flooding the whole valley. So so that's why that's so muddy, but it's nice passage when it, you know, when you get out of the mud. Mm. Uh, it's not one that I visit very often. But if I click this, I don't know what will happen, but I'm hoping you can still see this. You see that big picture? Nothing's no. changed. Nothing, yeah. Nothing's changed. Right, okay. Uh, right, I'll leave, I'll leave that then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Charlotte could see it, but you can. Um, right, so Torco Vaca. This one is um, a cave that I've been more more involved with. So kind of I use it as a bit of a... This is like one of my projects you know, more of my projects than any, any others. Um, so I quite like it. Doug and Sweetie were there when they opened the back door, weren't they? Yeah, Doug, Doug and Sweetie were, um, helped dig Big Mat, which is this entrance here. Um, this is the... That's the one we uh, we put the convoluted tube in, isn't it? That's it, yeah. Yeah, so I think that was Doug in 2014. And then did you actually get through on... In 2014, sweetie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, because they, they went and got that big tube and <laughs> cemented it all in while we were there, I think, didn't they? We didn't right. go through it, did we? But people did, didn't they? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so um so big big mat is essentially the back door which pops out at um Langdale Screes, I think it is it Langdale Screes. Yeah, um, Anyway, anyway, it's on the right side of the sum, um, and it's easy access to the system, essentially. This here on the right-hand side is kind of a... Um, I don't know what the, what the word is. It's a common kind of picture, really, because there's so many shafts that just fall out of the floor. So to, to the left of the photo here is normal cave passage okay um, tube, and then you'd be walking along and then suddenly if this is 33 meter drop um appears in the floor so that's the general cave in general um idea is <laughs> don't fast on done any of these like the um, near gill that doesn't it what's that sorry looks a bit like near gill doesn't it where you're going along yeah. and suddenly the Ground disappears. Oh yeah. Well, th this is a um, this is the first of I think seven pots which end up to be the same same depth and they end at a they end at a shale band, um, but water drops in them and so there must be something below there. It's just finding you know, it's just bolting the right one and getting water. Yeah. Um, she has quite, so, she has is quite poor, Lalo, isn't it? What's that? Sorry, said she is quite porous as well. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, in terms of other pictures of Vaca, um, that's me doing another one of those. Are you posing there, Tom? No, <laughs> yeah, that, looks like, that looks like a pose. <laughs> Not a pose. That's. I think I've got my hand through a bolt, and it's a kind of. Can you hurry up, please? <laughs> um, but yeah, you, so you got some nice helot tights down there, uh, which I might mm. zoom in. Um, some lovely helot tights. This is around shoulder and muscle area. I think it's called. Um, and some pretty style things that have fallen off the roof. And then 
just rooms and rooms of you know chambers like this, mm. uh, <clears throat> which kind of makes you want to, well, makes me want to go back to Masienzo. Mm. <laughs> yeah, look at all the broken straws on the floor. <laughs> Sorry. Hang on. Yeah, I've, I'm lost. If I press that, like, yeah. So you've got um, along with straws, you've got pretty gypsum like this. The, the place is just caked with with um, these formations, and you know some of the passages feel like you're walking through a mine. Um, as I don't know, it just feels minerally and well, like dyes falling through there. Feels like you're up in, or well, you should be up in Nent or, you know, somewhere not cave. So, uh, I'm going to press the X again. So, I mentioned back door before. Um, if you go, I think Doug may have gone down this one, this end as well, but at the base of the entrance series in the original cowpot or backer, um, you end up at this sub. So this is like Bass and Flight. Um, what are you doing? Um, yes, yeah, so this is like Bass and Flight, which is a 10 metre dive, but there's a fixed fixed line through. And well, I don't like I don't like the dive personally. Um, but that that's within the first half hour of um, of your trip half hour 40 minutes and then after that you've got the actual cave system that's where it branches off and i don't know what i'm going um yeah that, so that's where it branches off and goes into all the pretties and um gets you back to the back door so in 2016 i think i can't remember when it was actually um Due to the sump, we thought we'd push for the back door, um, which is probably half hour past this point. Um, but in doing so, we spent two nights camping in there um, and, yeah, managed to survey quite a bit. That's when that shaft got bolted as well, or that pitch, um, along with quite a few others, surveyed loads, took loads of photos and just, First time camping underground, which was pretty cool. And then, yeah. Who, who's that? <laughs> That's Doldy. Um, <laughs> who, who did he steal those off? Um, I think that's Jude's bra. That's hers. <laughs> <laughs> Were they <Yeah>. yours, Doug? No, <laughs> 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 But yeah, so to, after the first night, we realised that it wasn't as bad, or the conditions weren't as bad as we thought they were going to be. Um, so stayed up a lot later than we thought we were going to, drank all of our supplies, all of our wine and all of our beer. Uh, so on the second day, Johnny and Chris um, nipped out to the supermarket. So it wasn't a full-on expedition proper camping trip it was a uh, we were not that far from the end it was about two hours from the entrance so um yeah so that's back it there is a survey but i think it'll take you out of um out of this but next right so more recently i can't remember when this kind of took off but there's Cueva Cubio de Juanio, Cold Sore Cave, um, which I was talked into helping on um, last, not last year, 2019, I think it was, um, where in 2019 they'd got to this point here. So it's up here, and then they got to this point here. Um, I was told that there's a draft coming over a style boss, and Nobody's been up it because they ran out of time. So I went in with um, the Danish couple um, and we managed to survey from there to this corner here. 
and then we did another trip and surveyed it all down to here. And then now Rianio, which showing you before, now links to the very bottom here. So that was quite a, you know, that's railway size passage again. Um, and I think, yeah, I think it was about 600 metres worth of, um, doesn't sound much said, but 600 metres worth of passage. And there's still quite a bit going off on this corner, which I think it goes that way. Um, or I think it will go that way. So, impressive. How far into the system are you there, Tom? Um, well, the entrance is up here, I think. Yeah. From there to there is roughly two hours. Oh, okay. So, okay, not bad then. No, it's so easy caving that as well. So, um, it's just the entrance that's a bit of a shitter because it's a free climb, but it's at the bottom of a um, like a cow trough that overflows into it, so it makes all the mud just horrible. Um, it's supposed to take a rather really, but I don't think we ever did. So, so yeah, that's not a you know a big undertaking. We should park right next to the entrance as well. So. Um, but like I said, it was a big cave to link with Rianyo. So, mm. so these are some of the pussies inside. There's a load of bat skeletons and other skeletons, which, yeah, um, other skeletons, which I'm not sure what they were. Um, and then you got quite impressive reef formations. Um, yeah, that roof was amazing, isn't it, on the bottom picture? Yeah, well, that the roof in there looks similar to one in Yuthweka, um Pig Trotter, Pig Trotter Passage, I think it's called. Um, oh, it looks volcanic. I can only imagine that this, pass the passage here is, like, was a bedding plane. Mm. So it was a load of smaller passages and then it's just been taken out, um, taken out of the lake, but I'm not really, I'm not sure, I'm not a geologist. So, um, it looks like phreatic stuff, doesn't it? Where the where the sort of softest stuff has been been eaten yeah, away. Yeah. 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 Yeah, quite a few of the weeds in there go through stuff that kind of looks like that. So you yeah. wonder whether you're in the roof of something, but there's quite a few drops that just don't go anywhere. Um, you know, quite a few leads that just narrow to nothing essentially. So, um, ah yeah, so back to oh, Fresnado, so we're out of the four valleys now. Oops. Um, this is the one for with the mud sump. The mud sump is there. The entrance is up here. That from the entrance to there is roughly what three hours um because it's horrible crawling and crawling slipping squeezing it's just a generally grim cave and then you've when you get here you've got the option of let me zoom in actually. yeah when you get here you've got the option of the what's that called oh the howling because it's a howling tube but you're in liquid mud and you've probably got an inch or two airspace um, for about five metres. That's nothing for us hardy, uh, North Whaley and <laughs> Well, yeah. <laughs> I actually quite, I, I quite enjoy that because after you've been rolling around in all the shit and the crawls and squeezes back here, you're boiling by the time you get here. And then yeah. in a nice cold bath of mud is really nice. Um, <laughs> you can avoid them, but, but, it, <laughs> but it takes about only a statement the cave could make. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you can can avoid the mud, but it takes about an hour to do this round route, which involves pitches, and I've, I've not done that because I don't see the point. Um, and then if we can zoom out again. 
So rest of the cave's just been done before I ever went in there. Um, I think they got to this point in 1979 or something like that. Um, down here, there should be, a, yeah, there's a boulder choke. Boulder choke there, I think. And that's like the terminal, that's the very end. Um, in 2018, we decided to talked into Bolton and Avon, which was here. And then we managed to get all of this, which is called the Honeymoon Series. Um, and, well, just general nice cave after that, actually. Uh, streamway running through. So this is a stream from here down to here. So you feel like you've kind of, you've got into something big again. Um, but it closes down each, each end. So, so there's, there's no entrance or exit from the streamway? Well, I think it comes in via boulder choke again, but there's Avon's oh, okay. and then it sinks into a... I think it just goes into a sump, if I remember rightly, but the water from downstream will end up here. So you've kind of... This is all high-level passage. Yeah, yeah. But if you follow that, it, yeah. I, imagine, I imagine that's a dive there. There might be dry stuff in between, but that's where we need to be going upstream because that would connect to the four valley system eventually if you're very yeah. well. So, and so yeah, that's so that's first NATO. Like I said, it's a shit all. Um, you know, you're looking at 12, 14 hour trips in there. But there is something big above there because on ah here it is. So this is that corner. That's the streamway again. It's these two here, these two havens here, which we haven't drawn up properly. It seems. Um, I bolted this one on the right here in 2019 for I think it was 30 meters um, into a big. Big passage above, like railway size, you know, 30 metre wide passage wow. um, that chokes up both sides again. Um, so we, and then on the way, as we were abseiling down, we realised that we didn't actually look in the roof. Um, and directly above that Avon that we bolted, it looks like there's another 30, 40 metres into something that looks big again. Wow. But, but I'm not sure I could be asked bolting it. <laughs> but, uh, You've gone 30 metres, you might as well go the extra mile, haven't you? Well, yeah, but I remember how horrible it was <laughs> bolting the last one. I'm not that I'm not that confident. Well, I say not that confident. I didn't like being at the top on the last few bolts of that 30 meter one, so um, hey, you don't, it doesn't matter how high up you are, you're only going to fall to the next bolt, aren't you? Well, yeah, true, true. Yeah. That's what you've got to get in your head get past the exposure, and you're only ever going yeah. to go to the next bolt. Very good, then, Mike. You need, you need to come to my sensor and <laughs> bolt that then. Oh, you know, bolting's bolting, isn't it? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just, is that good? Egging yourself up for it as well, though, because yeah, yeah, yeah you because you're so far into the system there. It's I don't, know, it's a bit especially because the blood that comes with me in there, James, he hates yeah. SRT and rope work, so he doesn't do uh, both. He is yeah. more water, so any sumps he'll be straight through the sump, whereas I'll hesitate with that. And I prefer the sump, uh, the bolting, so. So yeah, so that's Fresnado and that's potential now. Um, Yo-Yo, I... Well, there's a few scout cavers and, well, you know Wilman and Sam? Oh, yeah. Wilman won't... Well, he struggles to come caving with me anymore because he doesn't believe what I say. You put the French off this day as well. <laughs> the French hate this. So Yo-Yo... So Yo-Yo goes back and forth, or up and down even, um, hence the name, and then ends oh, in 
a huge series of pitches in 20, 25 metre wide um, passage or oh, tubes, shafts. Um, the big pitch that I don't like. Yeah. It's really quite a false story. Yeah. So halfway down at 75, or not halfway, but at the bottom of the 75, obviously dangling 75, free hanging in the shaft with loose boulders above you. You land on a platform of choked um, boulders, boulders the size of you know, double decker buses, sort of thing. Right. You squeeze through this boulder. Um, local and carry on abseiling. <laughs> when Wilman was down there, we had, I think, six people in the shaft at one time. And then I just remember I was right at the bottom, I wasn't on the rope yet. And I just remember hearing below. And I don't know why, but coming through those boulders, that wasn't a nice kind of thing to hear and then there was ah and then you know it echoed all around and it oh, was horrible so i've derigged that now and i plan to never go there again so, <laughs> um, so risco which is in the valley which is by the um via ferrata in matienzo this was found a couple of years ago in a system that is you know, nice and old. It was found one of the first systems to be found, um, and then somebody just looked at the survey, realised there was a question mark, had a look at a question mark. There were one set of footprints in and out of this passage, um, and then they stopped, turned around, and then a couple of years years ago, um, a couple a couple of lads just went in and found this chamber, which is. Quite special, really. It's amazing, isn't it? That's one of Joel's photographs. So yeah, yeah. So this oh, is 14. Um, but you have to strip off down to your undersuit and not allowed wellies in there because it's just so pure white. Yeah. Um, but yeah, look at you know, look at the stuff like that. Oh my god, wow, look how clear that water is. God, yeah, that's amazing. So yeah, that that's like one of the selling points for, because there are plenty of places kind of like this, um, but have unfortunately haven't been kept. Doug, one minute to re-entry to atmospheric entry. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. Uh, are you keeping an eye uh, on the? I, I've got I've got the BBC thing on the other computer, but. I, Oh, I've just got the. I've got. Sorry, Tom. I've got the live. I've got sorry. Tom on one screen, and I've got YouTube live NASA feed on the other. <laughs> and I've even got an animation of it. So should we pause? No, no. Well, it's thirty oh, seconds. It says atmospheric entry in thirty-five seconds. Is that the beginning? I assume of atmospheric. Yeah, entry? it's it, it's about it's about four minutes, I think, through the atmosphere, and it before the heat shield dropped off. Uh, sorry, carry on. We, we're caving, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, um, yeah, I'll try to race through it. Let us know when it. No, no, go. no, no. Right. You take your time, Tom. Honestly, you can keep us updated. All right. Yeah. What do you want to know? Do you want to know when it touches down or what? I just want to know if it makes it to the surface. Without... All right. Okay. That's well, I'll give you a shout if it does. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in one, in one piece, you mean? <laughs> well, obviously, yeah. Yeah, I'll definitely make it to the surface. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. So, well, carry on in a, a bit. Um, Vaini, I mentioned this before again, along the same idea of the size of the passages, size of the chambers. They, these are actually some of the smaller passages in there. Um, smaller, and massive. It's probably one of the driest trips you could ever think of. Um, and I think, oh, I put this picture in because that is pretty much the only bit of water in the upper series. Um, for a good two, three hours of caving. Um, this drop... Does that, does that come through a fault line in a roof? It comes... That's the... We're actually on a lower level here, and then yeah. the, the upper entrance is above. Um, so I think if this is the shaft... OK. If I, I am thinking, but it literally comes in and out of the system in the same place. Um, but event... Eventually, there is a pitch which leads down into the Rio Rioja, um, 
which is the water that feeds Matienzo. So it does get into stuff that's worth, or that's nice and kind of cooling, but getting there is just a pain in the ass. So, um, again, big, big passage. Uh, some side, some London French dude. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is the um, Rio Rioja down the bottom. We were die tracing. Um, well, I pissed in it <laughs> at some point to see whether it went green. But um, yeah, the water from here goes through to Reñada, I think it is, um, which is in the Matienzo Valley. So. This one here, just again to show the size of some of the things that we're walking out here, um, entrance shaft, just a random kind of, this is just random on the hillside, right at the top of the mountain. Um, and I think we were probably the first people in there since 1960s or whatever it was. Nothing too interesting there, but that's where that salamander and the snake was. Uh, or were. So again, massive stuff. Got Rignada. Rignada's like more of a touristy cave now. Um, because I think most most of the um, ways on have been pushed. Um, even the locals go in Rignada. Uh this was from 2014 again. A little tourist trip. Uh and Sweet is in the background there as well. Uh, again, Rignada is a muddy shithole. <laughs> We're all used to that. So, right, so some of the bigger, big stuff. Um, this is Quato Coventosa, which is 581, I think it was, um, meters deep. Starts at the top of the hill and then comes out in Coventosa, which is huge, pretty passage um, via a series of pull-throughs, which I've, I've done it, but not on pull-throughs before. Um, but we didn't actually go all the way down. So um, I think we got to about 300 and then went back up, which was a stupid idea. <laughs> uh, but yeah, trick is like this. This is kind of a local authority. Um, well, yeah, the Spanish government essentially have put on notice boards outside to say what cave it is. And this is kind of, you know, all your local groups, caving groups, um, come down here with, you know, pay customers. Yeah, you have, to have, so, yeah, you have to have a permit for this place. Um, it's outside the valley, but we go tend to go every year just because it's so pretty. <clears throat> Random. So on the smaller side, you've got um, small sites, which are just random holes in the landscape. Um, this is Torcaraldi. And then, to be fair, on your days off or your days in between, you tend to do some surface digging or you know, surveying places like this or trying to find places like this so as you can see behind the entrance is there um what yeah um and yeah all drawn up sort of thing but that one's only 20 meters or so so random digging surface but it's, it's good for things you get to play with explosives and piss off farmers um but a lot of the entrances to the big systems tend to look like these, really. So they start out as these and then just get engineered into something a bit bigger, usually. So all the recording um, goes on at the back of the bar, Pablo's. Uh, and Duran here in the background tends to be the kind of, well, I think he's the next head teacher so if you don't do your record so if you go caving during the day if you haven't written it up by the time you have your first beer or wine in your hands then you get shouted up so he's quite strict but 
at the same time, not many people listen to it. So. Um, <laughs> random fun, really. Got stuff. That's more like it. Yeah, so expedition meals, um, expedition, just general. This is the restaurant at the back of um, Pablo's and the campsite is just through that window there sort of thing. So you haven't got far to roll home. Um, but yeah, probably I can or could fit through a chair. Probably can't now. <laughs> um, my shoulders are too broad. <laughs> Shut up. Nothing to, do, nothing to do with the buddy belly. No, nothing to do with that. So, um, But yeah, other socials, barbecues, um, expedition meal, Matienzo in the morning feels... To be fair, before 10 o'clock, it feels like Wales. It's usually raining. The mist is down. It's cold. Um, and then as soon as the sun breaks through the clouds, then you know it goes from about 10 degrees to 30. Boils you out your tent. Yeah. Other things to do around. The beach is only 20 minutes away. Um, it's good. To be fair, it's good for family holiday sort of thing as well. I first went out there as a kind of on holiday rather than expedition. Um, there's Via Ferrata, so is that the Romales one? Yes. Yeah, so that's just outside the valley. There's a Via Ferrata in Matienza as well. There's one in Arredondo and one in Romales. Um, there's the river on the other side, which comes out of the cave just up, up out of shot, um, and it's absolutely freezing cold. But, you know, when you're pale and ginger, it's quite nice to be in the cold out of the sun. Yes, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, plenty of fishes around your feet as well. So, uh, that's that picture again. And then that's it, to be fair. So I think I've covered most caves, what it is, where it is, and yeah. beer. Yeah, so um, any questions? It was very good. I enjoyed that. When's the next trip? Yeah. Happy yeah. yeah. wouldn't mind going there. Looks amazing. It is um, oh, unbelievable. Yeah. Even walking down the road, you know, when you're just off on a jolly, there's just cave entrance everywhere. It's uh, it's just like nothing you've ever seen anywhere else, really. Uh, and so yeah, the, well. yeah, the bakers and Pablo's are about... 10, 10, 20 minute walk, is it? Depends how drunk you are. Well, yeah, it depends how drunk you are. But um, <laughs> you can walk between bars and when you know when you're doing that, you're kind of staring up at the hillside and mm. um it makes you want to go up there, but at the same time doesn't make you really 